uh, lecture five is all about one concept, namely the concept of uh, reversibility or reversible Markov chains. If you uh, look, you know, in your textbook or pretty much any textbook, you'll see, you know, this kind of one sentence definition that basically will tell you that a Markov chain is reversible if it satisfies the local balance condition, right? which basically just means, uh, you know, the its stationary distribution pi will, um, you know, hold, you know, these conditions, right? This relation will hold. Um, for all pairs of states x, y, right, with respect to the one-step transition probabilities. So we've seen this condition before and used it to find a, a stationary distribution in, in some cases, and we also saw that uh, we can't do it um, uh, for all examples. Um, and the point of this lecture is to, you know, go beyond the kind of this abstract definition that doesn't necessarily ex explain where the word reversible comes from um, and we'll try to do it you know in terms of some intuition coming from uh, again from physics and right? all this all this stuff really comes out of physics um, and uh, you know and then try to take that intuition and make it you know mathematize it right make it uh, into rigorous mathematics so let me first play you a few of these uh, videos um, so again this is the thermodynamics lecture you see the link to below and I'm going to fast forward to to the part where he starts talking about reversibility in a, in a very intuitive and, and easy to kind of grasp way so I'm going to cue the sound here vague concept what does it mean to increase the entropy of the universe let me give you some solid examples and so I have two videos here video A and B let me start playing them they're both the same video, but one is played in the forward direction and one is played in the reverse direction. And so you, can you figure out which one is forward and which one is reverse? It's hard to tell. Um, if I remember right, A is actually played in the forward direction. So we can think of this as a reversible process. It's just as likely to happen in the A direction as it is in the B direction. But let me show you another video. Can you figure out which one of these is played in the forward and which one is played in the reverse? Well, you've probably never seen B as a video. You don't see milk spontaneously move outside of a cup, so you know A is in the direction. Now we're dealing with an irreversible process. It's totally probable to happen in the A direction, but it's statistically improbable, if not impossible, to happen in the B direction. Let's watch this. This is another one. So which one of these is in the forward? Okay, so I mean, I think that kind of really nicely explains the, the whole concept, right? It really has to do with kind of this experiment where you've videotaped some stochastic process and you're able to look at the video and say, yes, this is, you know, moving forward in time or yes, this is moving backwards in time. And sometimes you won't be able to tell. And when you can, right, it, it, uh, it basically means the process is irreversible as in that time uh, diagram right there that's being shown and all this is linked to um, to entropy and and um, then this notion of the arrow of time I have another video on this um, let me play this and uh, cue the sound and in a second where you'll see some more videos of um, time irreversible processes Imagine if you could just unspill a glass of milk, or unbreak an egg. No matter how hard you try, you can't unmix the coffee and get the cream back out. Almost nothing is more obvious than the fact that time flows from the past towards the future. Scientists and philosophers... Okay, so we see Einstein there and the arrow of time and so on. So, you know, hopefully that kind of... Um, gives you a, a little bit of, of, of an intuition, right? Again, it's um, w being able to tell, you know, the direction in which time is moving is kind of this key notion of irreversibility, whereas reversible processes are those that, um, given sort of a video tape, right, or a video recording of, of kind of how they're moving, you just you, you cannot tell if the movie is playing being played forward or it's being played you know from the back you know backwards right? and so that's the 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 main um kind of intuition behind all this and so our goal in this in this lecture is to make all this precise 
mathematically and tie it to these uh, local balance conditions. And I'll start doing that in terms of this concept of uh, time reverse chains. Um, and maybe one more kind of re remark before we get started is sort of, kind of what's the big picture uh, or what's our hierarchy of, of the Markov chains that we've seen so far. Well, there is kind of maybe the set of all Markov chains that I've drawn here in this big, right? This is the, that's the big set, the all encompassing set of Markov chains. Uh, inside of it are gonna be Markov chains with a stationary distribution. That's this set right here. So these are Markov chains with pi, a stationary distribution. And we'll see examples of Markov chains that belong here. Um, you know, they don't have a stationary distribution. But as far as this lecture is concerned, we're looking at this further strict subsets of Markov chains with a stationary distribution that are called reversible. And for these chains, um, it's, you know, it's these local balance conditions that are going to turn out to hold. So, you know, we've already seen, right, we already proved this lemma that local balance applies global balance, but not the other way around. So, you know, what does it mean? Well, you know, it means that when you try, for example, to, to look for a stationary distribution, like, like we have several times, you can, you know, maybe start with uh, local balance. And as soon as you fail trying to find the distribution pi that satisfies this, then you know that you're not in this set, right? You're essentially being moved out here. And then once you're out here, you begin to try to see if there is a distribution pi for which the global balance relation holds. And if you cannot find, you know, or if you show there doesn't exist a, a pi uh, satisfying global balance, then you're essentially out here, right? You're, you have no stationary distribution at all, but you may still have a, a Markov chain, right? Given that it, it supposedly it has a uh, Markov uh, property, right? With, with one step transition probabilities. So we're going to begin, right? Digging into this, you know, this subset here, right? That this uh, set of reversible uh, Markov chains, but we're going to have to uh, get there slowly. Uh, first, we're going to go through this uh, definition of a time reversed Markov chain, and I'm going to do this with three lemmas and, uh, you know, one clip each. So, uh, you know, hopefully those three will, will then motivate uh, the concept of reversibility and, and then tie it back to, to, this, to this local balance uh, relation. So I'll stop here.